Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's been a while. I think it's been like five or six months since I've posted a YouTube video, and I am, <clears throat> I am back. So, <laughs> Jesus. Anyways, hello. I wanted to make this video just kind of as a way to get back into creating content again. I have created a bunch of YouTube videos, honestly, in the past few months but I just haven't posted any of them. A big part of that has been just like, that I didn't want to edit my own videos because I've just been so busy doing other stuff. I've been super busy in school. School has started back up for me. I'm currently in my second graduate school year of physical therapy school. Uh, as you guys may or may not know, I'm going to school to be a doctor of physical therapy. So that takes up a big part of my life. During the summer, I was also a gross anatomy tutor, which also took up a ton of time. And throughout that time, I've been editing a lot of YouTube videos for Renaissance Periodization, or RP, as you guys might know them a little bit better. Um, I actually have one on my screen right now, which is the Dr. Oz episode of the Exercise Scientist React series. It's gonna be insane. So probably by the time you guys see this, that video will be out in like a week or something like that. It's gonna be crazy. But yeah, it's been a super long time since I've created a YouTube video. I've honestly just been like really focused on school and making money. YouTube doesn't really make me money at all. Um, it used to make me a good amount of money back when I did like powerlifting and I was like making, you know, deadlift transformations and stuff all the time. Like those did super well and I was able to make some money off of YouTube videos. So then it was really, really worth my time to make the videos. But at this point, I don't really make any money off these YouTube videos. And it's honestly pretty nice because at this point I can create YouTube videos just to create and not really worry so much about how well it does or anything like that. It was like really not fun for me to create YouTube videos with the expectation that they're gonna do well and then have them not do well and then it would just cause so much stress and just, it was just like not a good situation, honestly. So I'm glad I'm not really in that situation anymore and I make my money elsewhere than my YouTube channel. So. Now I can really create content that I just want to create. It's probably gonna be a lot of content that um, has copyrighted music in it. I hate no copyright music and I would much rather create YouTube videos with music I actually listen to. So that's gonna be something that I'm gonna start doing in the future. And I also just, like with YouTube videos, I always want to be providing value to you guys in some way. And whether that be entertainment, informative, like for the most part, I feel like my videos are educational and informative in some way or another, because I'm not like some crazy like comedy genius like Dr. Mike is, like I'm not like that. But I love to learn and I think that I can put things in a very good way for people to understand and actually take something away from my videos. So that's like, the main thing I want to do with this YouTube channel is create value for you guys and hopefully you guys get something out of it. To get you guys up to speed a little bit with my lifting and stuff, I have been bulking now for something like a year. I had about like a six week mini cut in there and I dropped like, you know, 10 pounds. I had taken like some DEXA scans and stuff too. I might have talked about that in one of my previous videos, but it's honestly been so long, I have no idea. But I am planning on making a video at some point of the DEXA scan results that I've gotten. I'm actually going to get one again soon to see how much progress I've made throughout my massing phase and I'm about to start a cut. So I've been maintaining for the last like month or month and a half-ish. And I'm about 200 pounds, so that's up, you know, 10 pounds from my highest weigh-in ever before this mass. So I've made a lot of progress and I've hit a new body weight high, which is just fantastic. That's, I think, where most massy phases should go. The US should really be pushing your body weight to the next level. But my hunger is like totally shot. So I'm gonna be doing a cut down to when I get nice and lean again. So I am probably gonna cut down to like around Maybe 180 pounds is probably the lowest I'll go, but I'm really excited to see what 180 pounds looks like because last time I did a diet, I was already looking pretty nuts at like 173, 175. So if I get down to like 180, I'll probably be like pretty shredded at that weight. So I'm pretty excited to see how that goes and I'll be, of course, taking you guys along with me on that. I definitely want to be a lot less perfectionist about my YouTube videos, you know, like, it's clear that it works really well for people to just create videos and not edit them much. Like if you look at Sam Suluk, I'm sure you watch him, like his videos aren't edited at all. They're awesome. I, I enjoy his videos, honestly. Sometimes when I'm eating meal, I'll, I'll watch one of his videos because they're just chill and straight up and like no 
frills and everything, which is awesome. I feel like in social media these days, it's so easy for videos to just be so eye-catching and so like attention-seeking and stuff. And I don't really want my YouTube videos to be like that. You know, this is like a long form content style that I don't think should be like that. And I am not gonna make my YouTube videos that way. So if they're not attention grabbing and stuff like that, like that's how I want my YouTube videos to be. I don't really care so much about them going viral. But if that happens at some point, don't, you know, that's, that'll be awesome. But yeah, man, I just really wanted to make this video to catch you guys up a little bit and say what's up since it's been so long since I've created a YouTube video. And for the rest of the video, I'm going to be showing you guys some training footage that I've gotten over the last few months. And I will talk about technique and lifting and everything like that. So hope you guys enjoy that. Pleasure to be back. Um, I'm excited to create my own content again. This is gonna be sweet and I'm really looking forward to it and I hope you guys are too. So yeah, enjoy the rest of the video and I will talk to you guys soon. All right, so I am going to be showing you guys a bunch of footage from the last three months. Uh, this is from July, I believe. So this is about three months ago. This was after my mini cut. So I'm looking a little bit leaner here than I have been looking more recently. But this is probably at around 193 pounds or so. Uh, right now, well, from the recording of the intro, I am sitting around like 201 pounds. Um, and yeah, I have been training biceps really, really hard for this entire bulking phase. So for the past year, um, arms have really been a prime focus of mine. I have had some arm specialization mesocycles where I was doing biceps like, you know, like five times per week at the most. Um, and I was also doing triceps like three or four times a week, but I was really, really focusing on bringing up my biceps. So I was including a lot of exercises like this too, where I am uh, putting the bicep in its lengthened position. So it's going to be extended at the shoulder and then also being able to get that full elbow extension to get the bicep as stretched out as possible with a supinated grip. But um, the biceps training has been paying off for sure though. Like my biceps have definitely grown over the last year. And I think my arms have made like probably the best progress they've ever made to be honest, which is really, really awesome. And like, man, I would hope so. I've, I've trained the shit out of my arms in the last year. So I'm pretty excited about the growth that I've got. I even have some, like some new veins and stuff, which are even apparent here at 192 pounds, which isn't like majorly majorly lean for me but you can even see like some lateral bicep veins which is actually super cool and it's it's pretty new for me so here is another clip from that workout this is a dumbbell bent over row so this was actually a workout that i did while i was still training six days per week uh, now that school has started back up i have been training a little bit less days per week so i actually did a maintenance phase last mesocycle that was training only four days per week which was quite a big change you know i've always trained six days per week uh for pretty much my entire training career and i've even had some times in there where i would do like you know 11 sessions per week which would be like two a days on a few of those days or actually most of the six days per week right um but i haven't done two a days in quite some time and i don't think i would do those again until i have much more time on my hands. I just don't have that kind of time right now as a student and working a lot for RP as well. But here, uh, just to touch on this exercise a little bit, we just have some stiff legs on the pit shark. This is a belt squat machine. Um, if you guys have a belt squat machine at your gym, I really highly recommend trying doing stiff legs on it. Um, I found it really great because it didn't tax my lower back as much and just completely destroyed my hamstrings, especially if you like do a pause at the bottom because the tension is still on. Um, it's, it's essentially like pausing a normal stiff leg deadlift just above the ground. I think that's probably a really good way to do it, especially if you're on a bit of a deficit so you can get your full range of motion. But um, that was a really good exercise. Here we have another one of my favorite exercises, which is the seated cable row. This is an exercise that I've probably done, man, for, I don't know, the last like six to eight months. I have not taken this exercise out in a really long time. And like, it's just not getting stale for me. It's just like one of those exercises that is just golden. It, it just always works really well. On this exercise, I always like to get a really, really deep stretch. So actually going into some spinal flexion here. And I am gonna talk about that a little bit more in my next YouTube video where I will be taking you guys through a mic'd up back day, which I think is gonna be a pretty cool video. But I definitely do wanna talk about, uh, you know, the safety of doing that kind of stuff too, because um, as a physical therapy student, I've learned quite a bit in school and um, 
have also heard some differing opinions about uh, spinal flexion, especially for my professor. So we can talk about that a little bit in the future. But here is another chest exercise. This is the deficit push-up. This is also a really, really good exercise because it puts you in that stretched position. So it is like essentially maxing out the range of motion I have in my pecs. And you can really see that because, you know, my pecs are like super striated at the bottom because they're being taken to their end range. And it just absolutely destroys my chest, gets me a really, really good pump. Here, I was actually doing a little bit of a my rep set. I think this was like a my rep set that was not planned. I think I had just like stopped that set a little bit early and I was like, man, I am not going to stop that exercise there. Like there are definitely times where I just don't want to push that hard. And then I end up like stopping too far away from failure. And if I ever end up doing that, I just like take a breath for a second, be like, man up, you know, and fucking go back in and hit the rest of the set and uh, get to the proximity to failure I want to get to. Here is some side delt training. I think I have two angles of this, but this is on the Atlantis lateral machine. This is a really, really great side delt machine. I am very grateful to have it. And here I'm actually taking a quick break and then going in and doing some my reps again. But in this case, we are doing some lengthened partials. So there's been a lot of data recently that has supported uh, hypertrophy training in the lengthened range to be uh, you know, a little bit more hypertrophic than training in any other part of the range. So I think biasing some of your training to that lengthened uh, partial range is a really good idea. So the way I've kind of been incorporating it is doing the first, like, like doing an actual like set of full range of motion to my proximity to failure of that workout. So I think this week was actually like to failure. So you saw me fail there. And then you take a little bit of a break, which is what I just did. And then you go back in and do lengthened partials also to the proximity to failure you have that week. That's like how I've been doing it. I haven't really experimented a lot with a bunch of other ways to do it, but I think it's probably the best. I think it's uh, smart to train with a full range of motion uh, because there are probably some things that you get from training in a full range of motion that you probably don't get when you train just in the lengthened range. Um, but I do think lengthened partials certainly have a place in a good training program for hypertrophy. Um, so here we actually have some bench press. Bench press is always a nostalgic exercise for me because I used to be a power lifter. Um, I've only competed in one meet, but I think I've power lifted for something like two and a half years. I did like more of a well power building in high school and that's like really what got me interested in doing powerlifting and that's when I did my uh, meet way back in the day. I did that at like 181 pounds but in reality I was like 173 or something like that. I, I was a super skinny guy and I think I squatted like 330, uh, bench 220 or something like that. I, I don't know how my bench was that good at that body weight but bench press is always like it, it, it's not an exercise that I would say I'm like super strong at but like I have a decent bench, you know? And then I think at that meet, I'd also deadlifted like 450 and I tried 500 and failed. Uh, but, that, that, but that was the only time I uh, power lifted and, but that was a lot of fun. So I'm actually back doing a little bit of barbell benching just because I've had that itch to do some strength training. And this was actually my maintenance phase. So it was a perfect time to go ahead and do this. So on this day, I did 245 for a three by five, I think. I think I only show one set here, but I did a three by five. And throughout that mesocycle, I was also doing a day with uh, threes. So I did, I think my best set of three was at 265 pounds. Um, but all of this goes to show that like my strength is pretty much exactly where I left it when I stopped strength training, which is awesome for a few reasons. And uh, like number one is that I haven't trained for strength in so long, you know, I've always been training for hypertrophy since I stopped powerlifting. So I've been training in like the five to 10 rep range or 10 to 20 or 20 to 30. And um, so I've not been neurologically adapted to training in those like really low rep ranges. So sets of five, sets of three, but I still have the same like strength, strength capability. And I've only just started training uh, the barbell bench press again. So I basically have that same strength with much less neurological adaptation and I'm not really used to the movement and I'm not really used to the rep range either. So I think there's a lot of good things to say that I have, you know, 
really built up some more contractile tissue in my chest and my, excuse me, my possibility to get a bigger bench is definitely there because I have the requisite muscle tissue to do it. So I'm going to be sticking along with the barbell bench press for a while and seeing if I can start repping out like 275 for a set of 10 or some shit like that. That'll be pretty sweet. But um, I also, of course, love incline dumbbell. I haven't said anything about this movement, but it's probably my the movement that I think is probably the best for the chest for several reasons we can get into in another video. But here is some posing footage. This is from the end of August. And this was up when I was uh, at 204 pounds. So I think this is my uh, most beefed up look. So I thought this was pretty sweet, honestly. I felt kind of like a brick shit house at this weight. Uh, 200 pounds overall has felt like really sweet. Like I definitely feel bigger than I did at 190 or anything like that. Um, there are some jokes out there that like 200 pounds, like people that are under 200 pounds that are under 200 pounds, like can't say anything about lifting because they're not big enough <laughs> or so something along those lines. Uh, and like, it, 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 it's weird. I feel like once you pass 200 pounds, it feels like a categorical difference when of course, like in reality, it's not, but it totally feels that way. And I, I feel like way bigger at 200 pounds than I've ever felt. So it's pretty awesome. I'm excited to continue massing once I'm done with this cut. Um, and I will, of course, be taking you guys through that. And we have a few different types of videos coming up. So next is going to be a mic'd up workout. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace.